Hey guys. On the day that I went to look at this land in Asheville, I didn't record whenever I was done looking at the land because I was so excited about the offer that I had put on the house, I mean the land, that I just wanted to go out and have a celebratory drink, get some good food, enjoy downtown Asheville, and that is what I did. Okay, um, uh, I just put an offer on a property. Oh my god. Bitch! I'm, I'm nervous. I'm not in Nashville anymore. I'm actually in Florida. I planned on filming this video, you know, the day after or so, but I just... I don't know, I just got entranced in Asheville. I just love so much about Asheville. I just wanna mention a few things. The people are so cool there. Like, I just really like good energy. I like good vibes. I like people that know how to say please and thank you and hold the door for each other and let each other cross the street and just like, we'll start a conversation up about pretty much anything and uh, just have respect for one another. I don't know, I, I just really like Asheville because of that. It's also a little bit like eclectic, you know? It's kinda cool, I like the vibe. I love the scenery also. I love snowboarding and you can within about an hour of Asheville you can get to a mountain and snowboard love that the food is awesome the food is freaking awesome if you ever go to Asheville go to Tupelo Honey Cafe I will say that I went to Tupelo Honey Cafe in Asheville the day that I put an offer on the land because I was like Tupelo Honey Cafe will just like put the topping on the cake right now because I love the place. I just put the offer in on the land. I'm gonna go have a drink and some good food there. And then uh, I couldn't find parking. So anywhere near Tupelo Honey Cafe. So I had to park about five blocks away. And mind you, it was cold and it was windy, but I was willing to walk. Anyways, I was cold when I got there. And when I got to the front door, there was a sign on the door that read this. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty upset, but nothing was gonna get me down. So I went down the street to a taco place. I had a taco and a tequila and soda, and I will say that that taco was the best taco I've ever had in my life. Out of all the places that I've been to in Asheville, this was probably one of my favorite places to eat. I can't remember the name of it right now. So anyways, let's talk about the land. So driving to the plot of land was pretty scenic. trailer live in it for a little while and rent it out to yep. where I could afford to do that again and yep. not so many people they will the buy like a four hundred thousand dollar house and then they're just a slave to their mortgage for the exactly. next thirty years. I'll never understand it. It's mostly people. I'm gonna have mine paid off in another yeah. five years and what's the difference if you're getting a thousand dollars a month for rent from a trailer or two thousand dollars for a house that you owe fifteen hundred dollars a month on. Yep. You know, I would rather make a thousand on that like mm -hmm. um, you just gotta shed that like negativity of like oh it's a trailer. Yeah, kind of thing. a lot like, of people choose. Up with the Joneses kind yep, of thing. and that's exactly it. That's that's why people choose that more expensive route because they're like oh I'm not gonna be known for uh, buying a trailer. Oh, I, well, fuck you, I'm making money. So yeah, when you're 60 and you're still paying on that same house, it's yep. now a piece of crap because you hadn't had any money to do anything. You're gonna wish you didn't keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. And now I own 10 of these trailers and I actually pay cash for a house that's you know a million dollars. Yep. I'm just glad that I had to start over when I was, you know, 25 instead of starting over when I was 55. Yeah, you know, how old are you now? I'm 36 now. Yeah. I learned a lot of lessons from failing, basically, because I bought properties that um, weren't ideal rentals. I was just buying flip houses. Yeah. And then when the market crashed, I couldn't, there wasn't that many um, families wanting to rent a house for $2,500 a month with, like, hot tubs and mm -hmm. pool tables and rooms and stuff. Yeah. So now I'm like, well, I'll never make that mistake again. Never buy anything. And I also was like, I had all my friends live over me. I was like, oh, if yeah. everybody just pays like 400 bucks a month, I so only cheap. have to pay this. And then none of them pay. Oh, you know, no, that's so terrible. it's like, uh, I said, I'll never buy anything again that I can't afford yourself. Buy myself without anyone. And like, worst case scenario, like, I could work at McDonald's and afford to live, you know. Yep. I just don't, uh, it's not marked very well. It's full or like. I mean, it says we're on. Oh, okay. Hopefully, I'm not 
hopefully. Or we'll have to stop and ask somebody. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's one of these too. Um, I have a feeling it's this one. I mean, like the road's not that terrible, but if you were in a like a sports car, you would. That's the cut in that he was talking about. Oh, yeah, see. Bucks uh, would be enough gravel to make you a driveway in. Yeah. It's about, it's like 4 30 for a load delivered us road line. Okay. Another probably 500,000 bucks you need to get somebody to come in here and just like weed eat everything. It is about 20 minutes outside of downtown Asheville. I think it's about 11 miles, give or take, from what I remember. But I will say that while we were driving, it was nice. There was, a, you know, houses here and there. They weren't all stacked on top of each other. And then once we started going a little bit ways up the mountain, the roads started getting a little more narrow. I mean, like the road's not that terrible, but if you were in a, like a sports car, you wouldn't want to come over here. But that, that still was totally fine with me. I would say two or three streets from the main street is where this plot of land is. and. Probably on about the last block and a half to two blocks, it started getting pretty steep. One car could go up or one car could go down, so that kind of made me a little anxious because it's like, what if it's dark outside and nobody can see the other person coming? That was, you know, giving me a little bit of anxiety and also I, I would not recommend just any regular degular car going up that last block and a half to get to the plot of land. Those factors I really thought about when deciding how much money I wanted to offer for the land and whether or not I actually wanted to put money into this plot of property just because like it's not going to be desirable for a large amount of people. We get to the plot of land and it's about an acre. It's 0.9 of an acre. It is pretty steep. You can put a house on the very front part of the land before it starts to get really steep. It's about, it's like 4.30 for a load delivered us road off. So in talking to the realtor, I realized that the liquid asset in tiny homes is slim to none. So if I were to buy this property and put a tiny home on it, and then I decide I just want to go sell the property, the property value is going to go up very little, if any at all, when I go to sell. My reason for buying this property was to make money. That's that's it. And because I love Asheville so much, I wanted to put a house on a piece of property in an area that I loved just in case, you know, something went south and then I was kind of forced to live there. So at least I enjoyed the area that I was in. But after seeing this plot of land, it's not really a plot of land that I would want to live on. But it is a plot of land that I would want to put a house on and flip or put a house on and rent out. So, as you can see, I also would need to cut down quite a few trees and brush and whatever you want to call this, like, stuff that's growing from the ground. And I would need to put, you know, a little bit of a gravel, I would say like a U-shaped gravel driveway in so it's easier to get in and out because, like I said, the way to get in and out of that plot of land is only one car can fit in going up and down. So then when we got back to the Realty office, I discussed with 
with George, the agent that's been working with me. He's a really great guy, by the way. Really, really knowledgeable. I discussed with him my concerns, and so we came to an agreement on how much I should offer to start. We decided on an amount, and I put in the offer. The next day, an offer came back much higher than the amount that I put in. I wasn't really happy with that because I think that they came down like $300 from their offer, which is next to nothing. So then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna come up on my offer and see what happens. So I came up and then they countered with, I think maybe three or $400 less from the original counter offer that they gave me, which was pretty discouraging. So I decided one more time to come up on the amount that I was willing to pay. And I told George, I said, this is the amount that I'm willing to pay. I'm not willing to budge at all he was like, you know what, we've got like a 50-50 shot with this. They might go with this because the land has been available for almost a year now. They actually bought the property with the intent to put something on the land and make money off of it because the people who own the property are investors. They make money in different ways, I think, on properties. I'm not really sure. We didn't really dive into that. George just told me that this was a plot of land that they planned on making money off of, but they have so many other investments right now that they just don't have time for this or want to make time for this, so they just want to sell the land and just be done with it. In my mind, I'm thinking maybe they're not in the biggest hurry because they don't really need the money. Anyways, when we were originally going back and forth with the offers, I was getting an answer with a counter offer very, very quickly. I think it was taking like, you know, less than a day for us to go back and forth and back and forth. When I gave them my final offer, it was three days that had passed and I was like, are they gonna, you know, accept my offer? Are they gonna decline my offer? What's going on? So in my head, I was like, you know what, maybe it's been a few days because they're kind of really thinking on it. Do we really want to give it up for this price? Are we willing to let it go for less than what we really want to let it go for? Eventually, to my demise, I got a message from George that said that he appreciated working with me and he will continue to work with me if I want to work with him, but the seller declined my final counter offer. So, let us take a quick moment of silence for my sadness. This is what I decided to do. I messaged him and I told him, I know that the amount that I told you is the highest that I'm willing to go, but I'm going to sit on it and think on it for a little while. And if the property is available in a month or two, I may come up just a little bit more and then see what they have to say about it. Because the potential to make money off of this property with what I want to do is is pretty, pretty good. It's actually very good. What I actually ended up deciding on is because there is very little to no money potential as far as liquid assets are concerned in tiny homes, I decided that it would be a better idea and opportunity for me to put a three bed, two bath mobile home trailer on the property because there's liquid asset in that. If I put it on the property and I decide to flip it, then I can make money. And believe it or not, you can buy a brand new three bedroom room, two bath mobile home for like 30 something thousand dollars. Now it's going to cost you money for, you know, septic setup, you know, power and, and all of those types of things. So it'll probably run you maybe 50,000 after that. But that is a lot less than I had originally thought. And I don't know what I should have originally thought because I had no idea. But if in a month or two, they haven't sold the property, like I said, I'm gonna put an offer down. I'll update you guys and let you know. Oh, another reason that I didn't wanna put a tiny home on this plot of land is because it is a little bit too far up the mountain and a little bit too far away from downtown Asheville for Airbnb potential, in my opinion, and in George's opinion. You know, people who are renting Airbnbs, if they're up in the mountains, it needs to be near something that is, you know, maybe like a, a ski resort or something to do up there. There's nothing to do up there. It's just a place that's secluded and not too, too far away from downtown Asheville. So that, along with the fact that there is little to no liquid asset in tiny homes, just kind of made me stray away from that idea and put me on to the idea of doing a trailer and now I'm so dead set on this that I really want to make it happen and I would like to make it happen but I want to be very sure or at least pretty 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 damn sure that I'm gonna make money off of this situation because I know that there's risks involved in buying property and buying houses and trying to flip them and doing all of that but I want to keep my risk relatively low because I'm brand new to this and I don't want to put all of my money into something and then it be a flop and then me be screwed. So I'm trying to be a little bit responsible when it comes to making these 
sort of financial decisions. And that's pretty much where we're at. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'll keep you guys updated. If you are new here, please like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend, and I'll be back next week with another video. Love you guys. Bye.